What's good, Red Nation? It's your boy Sanji back at it. And in today's video, I have a super exciting episode. And I want to talk with you guys about some of the news that's been in Raider Nation. And I want to just jump right into it. I want to get into the Derek Carr situation, man. This this one's very interesting because, you know, within Raider Nation, like most of us defend DC all the time. Um, but at the end of the day, I saw a lot of people kind of turn on, on DC. And if you guys don't know exactly what happened, basically Derek Carr, on the day Joe Biden was inaugurated into office, Derek Carr that day posted a video of him in a vest. And that to that vest he had on, had an American flag right across the middle of it. And that rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. And it wasn't just the fact that he stated uh, what he stated, but the fact that it had an American flag on it, right? Like I, initially I saw people talking like, oh, why would DC post what he posted? Uh, you know, is he part of Donald Trump supporters? Like, why is he doing what he's doing? And from there, it kind of shifted from that narrative. It shifted into, well, why is he wearing something with an American flag over it? And I found it crazy to think that it's a big deal that someone has a vest with an American flag because DC came out and said, hey, I was literally just working out. Like, I don't know what the hell all these people are twisting things into, uh, but I was just exercising and I was getting my off season program ready. And that's all I imply of the whole situation. Now, Dov Kleeman, uh, an NFL writer or analyst or media guy, posted this to his social media. Now, uh, Dov didn't technically say anything specific, but he did imply like, oh, DC's kind of, uh, on inauguration day, he's kind of implying something, right? Like, is he going to go protest or riot at the Capitol? Like, what's, what's he implying, right? Um, and DC came and he shot it down. And it's still interesting to me because like Fox News, CNN, um, all these bigger networks, they're starting to post articles today, right? Like I, I went on to, I, I Googled Raiders and the first article I see is Derek Carr on Fox News um, being, being talked about. And I find it interesting because it's, it's really a non-story at the end of the day. But here's the thing, right? People, a lot of Raider fans say it's a non-story, it doesn't matter. But then there's still that small portion of fans that say, well, it does matter, right? Because this isn't the first time something's happened with DC, right? In 2017, the Washington, at that time, Washington Redskins, uh, that game, right? Like the whole entire Raiders team took a knee minus maybe five players uh, and the coaches, I think as well. Uh, but Derek Carr was one of those five players. And then there are rumors that the offensive line allowed DC to get hurt that game. Even though that specific situation was shot down by some of the offensive linemen, I think Donald Penn and Osemley talked about it. Um, even though I think Osemley might have mentioned like it maybe did bother them, but I don't think I don't think the whole we let him get hit part of it uh, came into play. I think that was shot down right away. Uh, but regardless, people have mentioned that DC, he's came out in favor of uh, pro-Republican stances a number of times, right? And those are just two of the examples, or that should be just one of the examples was that 2017 game. Um, and then of course the American flag on his vest being a second. And once DC came and, and he shot down what was initially thought that, oh, he's a, he's going to protest or he's a part of this crowd. Once DC initially shot that down, then I saw on Twitter, the narrative shift that, well, why does he have a flag on his vest? And it's just crazy to me to think that people think that is a big deal. Like you can't have an American flag on your shirt or on your vest or whatever. That too, like, you know, he probably went to whatever nearby store and just picked up whatever weighted vest there was, right? Because that, that's what he had on. He had a, on a weighted vest, which is something a lot of people use to work out in. He probably went to the store and he probably just picked something out. Uh, and he didn't think twice that, oh, there's an American flag and that's a big deal for people. Um, but I saw a lot of people basically talk negatively about that. Now, that a lot of that is is just talk right it's on social media it's trolls it's people who say things but they don't they won't say it if their actual name was attached to it um, but regardless it's is interesting to me that it's becoming a bigger story than it actually is it's really not a big deal um but that's the Derek Carr situation man it's 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 crazy it's kind of was blown out of proportion um but I want to move forward man and I want to talk a little bit about a player who said he wants to be a writer 
and that's wide receiver Juju Smith-Schuster. And I'm not a big fan of Schuster's, but he's still a good football player, right? You can't ignore the fact that two years ago, he had over 1,400 yards. Like, you cannot ignore that. Um, but if you guys don't know the story, basically Juju Smith-Schuster was live streaming on Twitch. I think he was playing uh, some sort of video game. Uh, and he was asked a specific question, like, where do you want to go play? And uh, he named, I think, three or four teams. He said he wants to, he'd be interested in playing for the Packers, the Jets, the Raiders, and I think he said the Jaguars as well. So he mentioned a couple of teams, uh, but the Raiders were one of those teams. And it is interesting because you can't deny the fact that he's had success in the past, right? And another thing is, if the Raiders did want to go and, and get Juju Smith-Schuster, they do have to consider the fact that how much is he going to cost, as well as if we bring him in, are we going to lose Nelson Aguilar, right? Because we all know Nelson Aguilar was the best wide receiver for the Raiders. Like, he was the one guy that could go deep consistently and make plays, right? Like, he, he was the guy for the Raiders. And if we lose Aguilar and we trade him in, out for Juju Smith-Schuster and Smith-Schuster comes to the Raiders. Um, I think it's going to depend on how much he's actually making. And that too is Ruggs ready to take that next step, right? And he should be because Ruggs was the number one wide receiver chosen in the last draft, but he's not playing like it. In fact, I think he was like 10th in yards and catches and all these other statistics. Like Ruggs had a really bad rookie year, right? Compared to all the other rookie wide receivers. Like there were like Michael Pittman for the Colts had a better season and Pittman was like a third or a fourth round pick and he had a better season than did Henry Ruggs. So if the Raiders do plan to um, maybe move on from Aguilar, Ruggs has to be ready to step in because otherwise our offense is just going to take a step back. But Juju Smith-Schuster is interested in the Raiders. Personally, I wouldn't mind it depending on the cap as well as if we bring in uh, Nelson Aguilar back, right? Uh, but here's one of the, the disadvantages to, to doing that, right? He's a good player, right? Don't get me wrong. But I think one of the issues with the Raiders and one of the reasons why Henry Ruggs did struggle a little bit is because our offense does not provide a whole lot of targets to the wide receivers, right? We give a lot of targets to Darren Waller. Assuming Derek Carr throws the ball 30 times, 10 of those 30 throws will go towards Darren Waller. That's just a given, right? Um, Aside from that, five will also be thrown either to the running back or, or short to uh, the fullback or one of the backup tight ends, right? That's just a given. Uh, it's something that DC's done a lot is check the ball down. Um, so half of the targets are already gone, which means that between Brian Edwards, Henry Ruggs, Nelson Aguilar, if we bring him back, Hunter Renfro, right off the bat, we have four other guys other than Juju Smith-Schuster that would also need targets. And if there's only 15 targets left, I don't really know if Juju Smith-Schuster is going to have that impact and if he's going to be necessarily happy coming to the Raiders. And I think that's a big, big, big thing that we have to think about. Um, we can bring a player in, but they have to be happy with the system, right? The Raiders system does not target every single wide receiver uh, like a typical system, right? Big Ben throws the ball four or 500 times a season. I don't know if he did this past season, but in general, he has the seasons before. Um, and Juju's seen 10, 15, 20, even 20 targets in a game at times. And he's not going to ever get that with the Raiders. Like he'd be lucky to hit 15. He'd be lucky to hit 10 in our system. So I don't know if it's a good fit for the Raiders. I do like Juju Smith-Schuster's toughness, right? He's not one of those players that's going to get hit and not come back into the game, right? Uh, we've seen players like Ruggs get hit and then not come back. We've seen players like Kyra Williams just be injured for most of the last two years. Uh, you know, we don't have a whole lot of toughness, right? We have Renfro, and after that, I don't really know which one of our wide receivers is really tough, right? Um, at the same time, it's going to be interesting to kind of see what happens in the offseason uh, because there's another player that I think the Raiders are 100% going to target, and that's defensive tackle Leonard Williams. You know, last year, coming into this year, we heard so much about how Malik Collins is going to be that next great Raider. He's going to take this team to the next level. We heard so much crap about how great our defensive line is going to be. 
And honestly, from the defensive tackle position specifically, we straight sucked. Like we sucked badly. And it did not occur to me until I watched last season how bad the interior pass rush of the Raiders is, right? Because on every other play, I saw Cleveland Farrell run around. I saw Max Crosby run around, Arden Key run around to have no pressure right through the middle. And if you have that pressure through the middle, then those guys coming around can actually get the sack. Um, and I think Leonard Williams would be a fantastic player. Uh, last year specifically, he had 11 and a half sacks. He had 30 quarterback hits and he had 14 tackles for loss. Those are superstar numbers for a defensive tackle. 11 and a half sacks is a lot because the interior guys oftentimes double team. It's the easiest player to double team is the inside. Um, outside of Aaron Donald, um, and then maybe like two or three other guys like Fletcher Cost, DeForest Buckner, and even Quinnen Williams. I think Leonard Williams might be the next best pass rushing defensive tackle. If the Raiders can bring him in, fantastic. He's only 26 years old. He grew up as a Raider fan. Um, I think it'd be a great fit for the Raiders. Um, I would not mind bringing in Leonard Williams, but I want to know what you guys think about that specific signing, Juju Smith-Schuster, and the Derek Carr situation. Um, this video was not long at all. Um, you know, I don't know if I mentioned this in the beginning of the video, but I have been super busy with work. There's just been so much going on. Um, and I haven't had a whole lot of time to make videos. You know, I, I was, I actually started last week on a Henry Ruggs video and I really wasn't able to get that out uh, because I've been so freaking busy with work, man. Like, uh, the new year has been swamped with, you know, invoicing and all this other accounting related stuff that I've been doing. Um, but I do plan hopefully next week to have that Henry Ruggs video for you guys. You know, I discussed some of the things that I see within his game that needs to get improved. Um, you know, we spent a first round pick on him and I don't want him to be a disappointment, right? I want him to take that next step. Um, at the same time, we see the same thing happen with, with Hollywood Brown, right? Like he's in his second year, he was the first wide receiver taken. And there's like five or six receivers better than Hollywood Brown, at least even in, their, in the second year. And I hope that's not the case with Ruggs. Uh, but if I was being honest, it kind of looks like that might be the same situation. Second year in a row, speed does not matter, right? Good if a player has speed, but I think it is overrated. Uh, but we'll get into that in the Henry Ruggs video. If you guys are not subscribers, man, smash that subscribe button. It only takes a second to do a uh, thumbs up button. And I'll see you guys next time with another video.